Hi everybody and welcome to my studio. My name is Lana and I am an acrylic artist. Well today we're going to be working on video two of Saint Nick. So let's take a look at Saint Nick. Let me switch over and here we go. This is Saint Nick. If you've uh, already seen the first video that I did on him, you should be well on your way to uh, getting him completed. And so this is part two two of Saint Nick painted with deco art Americana acrylic paints such a fun design the surface is available on my website lanalam.com it is my bulb ornament plaque and um, I just hope that you enjoy painting Saint Nick with me let's finish him up so let's grab our paints and supplies and let's get started Okay, I was testing out a different color for highlighting on red because red can be tricky. Uh, I do like to wash over my reds when I'm done before I put my final bright highlight on, so we probably will do that. So I'm using uh, Scarlet for my highlight, my beginning of my highlight. So I've already put some right here along that wrinkle. I'm going to put a little bit out here. Take my water edge, let it soften. We don't want a bunch of uh, crazy hardness or thick paint. I'm gonna go up here to the top and add our highlight up here. We wanna walk this out a little bit into that water a little bit. Ooh, that's a lot of paint there. So let's walk that out just a little bit. Just a little spot right here. We're going to get a little bit of light. And then along next to the face here where we originally put our shading. This is actually on top here. And I might I want to try and fluff that out a little bit. It's more on top than it will be behind. So if that makes sense, we're going to put our um, when we put our fur on here, a little bit of it's going to come on top here. So and then our highlights on our wrinkles. And that is beginning our beautiful highlights here okay our second highlight is going to be with the neon's fiery red and we're just going to go over the highlights that we just did and just not bring it out as far just brighten those up this is a very bright color so I love that color on red. Oh my gosh, just makes it pop. Makes it pop. Okay, I think I'm going to leave the hat right there for just a moment. I want that to dry. We're going to come and add a little bit brighter highlight on here, but for now we're going to leave it right there with our neon red as being our brightest highlight so far. I want to get some more of the Santa done before I decide if I want to add an even brighter highlight on there. So we're going to move on and paint the um, hat band and the ball on the hat now. Well, let's zoom in just a little bit. I'm going to use a Deerfoot brush to start this and see if I like the effect that it's giving me. Um, this is a 3 8 inch Deerfoot right here. So I'm going to use it dry. I'm going to load a little bit of sable brown. Now we use some of the sable brown in our um, shading on our face. So I'm just going to load it up just pull a little bit of paint out and then tap my brush into that paint that I pulled out of the puddle. Touch my paper towel. I always touch my paper towel before I come and start applying paint and we're going to start 
tapping in some texture. I want him to have like a fur. I don't want the typical white that you see on the Santa hats. And you can use a bigger uh, stippling brush than what I'm using. You don't have to cover this up completely. The undercoat you don't have to cover completely, so don't feel like you have to work hard and get that covered up. We want to see a little bit of it showing through. We'll be using a little bit of that color in this. So we're starting to build a little bit of texture here. And the hat comes all the way down over here. And then we have the ball. We're going to be having some hair come around over here. You know, right now you're probably seeing all those empty spaces and you're like, what is going to fill that spot? Like right through there. Some hair is going to fill that spot. So have a little faith. We got it. It's all good. Okay, so just bring it down. And that's our first little tapping of the starting of our mink fur whatever kind of fur you want it to be. Okay, I'm just going to wipe my brush out. Just get the excess paint out of it. We don't need to wash it. And we're going to go into a little bit of darker brown. And so I have some burnt umber and soft black out here. I'm going to try the burnt umber, but I'm thinking it won't be the depth that I want in here. Well, we can add a little bit of it in here. I think the soft black is what's going to really give us some depth in here. So this is burnt umber. We don't want to cover up all that um, brown that we just put in. So just lightly put that in. A little bit over here. Turn your ball so your tapping is not going all the same direction. We'll probably come in and clean up a little bit around the bottom of that when we get some of the hair painted in. And maybe up here we'll do the same thing. Okay, again, I'm going to wipe my brush off. Okay. And then I'm going to load the base color that we put in here, which was the Oyster Beige. It's going to mix a little bit probably with some of that. If you have a little bit of brown left on your brush, tap your paper towel. And we want to put some light back in here. And we're going to go back and forth until we get our hat textured the way that we like it. We want to put some of that soft black in here. We need some of that uh, depth in there. So wipe your brush off. That was with the Oyster Beige. So now let's get that out of our brush. Let's grab some soft black, tap off on your paper towel, a little bit of this. I really want my bristles to splay out a little bit more. And we're going to come back in with some of our lighter colors back in here. This is a layering effect for this fur, so don't... I mean, right now, to me, we're still in the so ugly stage of this fur, so <laughs> I don't want you to get too caught up in how it looks at the moment. It's going to be great. I promise you it is going to look amazing. Okay, I'm going to wipe my brush out. If you have more than one brush and you can go back and forth between light and dark colors, that's great. But uh, I'm just going to work as much of the paint out of my brush as possible. That dark color we just put on. Okay, so those are all the colors we're going to use in the hat. Now I'm going to go back and tweak it and refine it. So I want to go back into some Oyster Beige. Let me put a little bit more out here. I think right now I'm going to use the Oyster Beige and the Sable Brown because I think those are the two colors that we need to bring back into the hat. I'm going to tap some of the 
paint out of my brush and begin very lightly tapping this in. I am so lightly tapping. I mean, the brush is barely, barely, barely touching the surface here. Load it, tap some off, and barely tap. Super light. We don't want to cover up all those colors underneath. We just want to start some some a little bit of blending here. So we're starting with just the oyster beige. Load your brush, tap off onto a dry paper towel. We're still just using the same brush that we started with. It's still dry. And our fur is starting to look amazing. So let's go over here and tap some on our ball here. This is such a very light tapping. I feel like I have to, whoop, that was kind of a hard tap, so I'm gonna take a little bit more paint off of my brush. And just, I mean, I'm, I'm way back on the handle here so that I can just barely skim that brush on there. And it is looking so good now. And we'll come back in and tap a little bit um, when we get the, um, the hair in. So I think I'm going to wipe my brush out now and grab a little bit of sable brown. Just a small amount to put on top. We don't want to overdo this color at all. So a little bit on your brush. I'm going to remove like most of the paint out of my brush. And now I'm just going to very lightly, I'm still back on the handle of my brush, and a little bit of that sable brown. You load your brush, you tap off, and very, very lightly. Do not lose all that beautiful light color that you just put in there. If you do, though, it's easy fix. You just go back and add some of it back in. But look at this fur. Oh my gosh. It is looking amazing. Sable brown, tap off. Oop, tap a little bit more off. It's coming off a little heavy. Way back on the handle of my brush. And I've kind of lost my where it goes up there, so I'm going to bring my skin tone and work that out a little bit. Okay, so I think I want to take my light color back in here one more time. That oyster beige. I think it needs that oyster beige. Just a small amount of it now. We don't want it, um, we don't need it everywhere, okay? We just want to tap some in, in a few places. very softly start bringing in a little bit of highlight on here come over here to our little ball need a little bit more paint I'm running out now Oh, that's looking so, so good. Okay, I'm not sure if I want to tap any white in here. That is an option to bring just a little bit of a highlight onto this fur. So I'll put a little bit out. I'm going to wipe out the paint out of my brush, which is that moisture beige, and get a little bit of white. And I really want to tap this off. Gonna mix a little bit with that oyster beige, which is good. That will keep it from being stark white. And then we can just come in and tap a little bit of white in here, and that's not showing up, so let me get a little bit more paint. A little bit of 
highlight on our fur. Maybe we'll keep it more at the top up here. And this is with white. But it's mixing with that um, sable brown a little bit. This white is very thin, so it's not sticking as well as I would like. Okay, I think I'm going to stop there with my um, layering because I don't want it to start getting too muddy. It's starting to get a little sticky, so it's starting to dry a little bit. So we want to get out of it now because if we just keep playing it with it, we're going to lift it and then we're going to turn it into a super crazy muddy mess. Okay, I want to fix this little place on the skin where the hat is bumped up a little bit. So I'm going to take my oyster beige and my angle brush, mix a tiny little bit of sable brown in there with it. Get some water in your brush so your paint will flow nicely and we want to paint that area. Come back and stipple that because it needs to be stippled over it. A little bit of our oyster beige. got that a little bit muddied up there so let's go back in with a little bit of darker color in there and then we'll come back with our lighter color on top of that I think I need just a little bit lighter color out here. Okay, I think that looks a little bit better. We are going to want to use a stippling brush here again a little bit later when we come back and do the finishing touch of the fur. So you want it to get dry. If you don't have a second one to use, then wash it out with some hand sanitizer or some rubbing alcohol to get all of the um, paint out of it so that we'll be able to use it again later. If you have an extra uh, scruffy brush of some kind, then you don't have to do that. So I, I would need to shade underneath that a little bit, but I want it to be good and dry. And so we're going to start working on the beard and mustache now. All right, we're going to start building on the fur here. And we're going to mix some black and white to make a gray color. We're going to start with like a dark gray color on here. We've already got our black, so we don't have to... Um, So we're going to make a dark gray color. Now I'm just going to do a little bit for dark gray and then come back and add as I need to white or black to darken. So let's just mix a little bit of this. That's kind of a light gray so let's get a little bit more black in there. more black. I like to sneak up on it when I'm mixing my blacks because you know 
I don't want to have a great big huge giant pile mixed here because I put too much black in then I had to keep adding white to make it a darker value or a lighter value so let's just work a little bit at a time I still want that to be a little bit darker mixed well and I don't know if that's going to be dark enough yet I'm going to add a little bit more black I want it to push more towards the black but not be completely black so that I can go up a shade from the black I'm going to try that I'm not sure that that's still going to be dark enough for me I might want to go even darker than that. We're going to use a um, rake brush here. This is a 3 8 inch flat rake brush. They come in filbert and flat. And so I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to load it with some water, tap it on my paper towel, and then come over here and load my brush. So I've got water and paint both in my brush and it should flow nicely for you okay every now and then you'll have to grab some water so I'm not going to finish the lip out until I get um, some of the fur in so I'm going to start with a little heavier layer of this color right here so I'm just in the thicker parts is where I'm actually pushing down a little bit harder with the brush and you can have your beard doing whatever you want it to do I'm gonna have some hair up here maybe not that close to the face so where's my eraser at I'm going to grab that we are gonna have some up there but I'm not sure it's gonna be that far whoop, that far over yet so we'll just take that down we don't want to forget our mustache So I can tell right now I need some water, so I'm going to go grab a drop of water and or just a little bit of water and then start add load some more paint. I'll get it out here in just a minute. I know what I want to say, but the words do not want to come out. Okay, so for the mustache, it comes right about there. And I'm kind of up on the chisel of the brush here and we're just stroking this in. Okay, so now we can see we need more hair over here. And we don't have to cover up all of our black, so don't get carried away covering up all of your black. We're going to go over here now. I'm up on the tip. If we get it on the nose, we can clean it off. Come back over here and add a little bit more. Ooh, got that just a little bit too heavy handed there. All right, so we're going to have some hair coming over here. A little bit coming there. There's going to be a little bit coming out from underneath the hat here. I'm on the chisel edge going like this now. Getting just um, fine detail lines for hair now. Trying to establish where everything is going to be. You don't have to be... Sorry about that. My camera shut off. So, um, I was just saying you don't have to be too worried about this layer right here. I do want to, um, a little bit more through here. Get my brush loaded up. I made plenty of gray here, so I'll be able to 
pull some of it out and start lightening. Okay, so now before I go on, I think I'm going to finish the mouth and get it done. So as we build our layers on here, everything will start looking a little bit more like Santa Claus. So I'm going to use my um, small little chisel brush that I used earlier, a six chisel. I'm going to grab some wild berry and I've got soft black on my palette and white already so those are the other colors we're going to be using. So I'm going to take my wild berry and add a little bit of soft black to it. this color on the edges, the outside edges of the lip, over here and over here. Just go right into that gray. Not a problem. Okay. He's looking good. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's repeat. I'm going to zoom you in so you can see the mouth a little bit better. We're going to mix um, Napa Red and Soft Black. This is the color we use for shading on the hat. And also the color mix we used for our snowflakes on the hat. And we're going to repeat this. We just won't bring it over quite as far. Okay, make sure your first float is dry. take a little bit of this mix and come along the bottom of the lip just a little bit. We're going to put a highlight right in the center so I'm going to leave a little gap open there. Okay I want to wash over the lip with some Tuscan Red maybe. I'm not 100% sure I want to do this. I might do the wild berry because I want it to stay a little bit more on the pink side so maybe we'll just mix them here we'll just mix the um, Tuscan red and wild berry get this really pretty pink color and I just want it to be a little wash or glaze of color I'm going to put this over the whole lip there give it a little bit more redness and I'm going to dry this real quick because I want to float a little bit darker color on the outside of the mouth and it's going to be soft black or lamp black or you can mix the two soft black lamp black let's just mix the two because I think that would work out best and then we're going to come out here and make this a little bit darker out here Okay. Now we're ready for a highlight on here and we're going to take some white we're going to take white and razzle berry I just dipped into each color one time which makes this a uh, really light pink and we're going to do a back to back float right here in the middle of the lip so we go down that side flip the brush over paint to paint and right there and that's our first highlight on the lips we want to make sure that's dry and then we're going to do just white that same way maybe not quite as wide just white this time. You really don't need to have much moisture in your brush this time if you're white, especially if your white is very thin like mine. So we're just going to come straight down the middle, flip the brush over, and straight down the middle. And then you can clean up the black around the mouth. 
right here. Get it nice and shaped there. and stroke just a little bit of that gray over the mouth right here. Okay, and that really helps a lot with the mouth. We'll wide angle out because that always helps. And there is Santa's lip. We'll be doing a little bit more shading underneath it. And when we get done, we probably will shade one more time out here on the outer edges with some black. But for now, that is uh, Santa's mouth. Actually, I think I'm going to do one more thing to Santa's mouth because even though I love the highlight, I don't think I want it coming all the way down. So I'm going to take some Tuscan and Napa Red and mix it together on my brush and go along the bottom of the lip right here. And we'll keep that highlight a little bit more at the top. That gives his lip a little bit more weight at the bottom so just adjust accordingly so that was just a little bit of uh, Napa and Tuscan red blended together if it's too bright you can add a little bit of soft black into it to kind of tone it down but um, I can already tell that uh, out here on the edges and uh, I'll just go ahead and do a little bit now we need a little bit of black a little bit more shading out here and darken that up so, okay let's continue on with the beard mustache okay we're going to move on with the beard now and we're going to um, take some of our gray mix here that we've got and I'm going to take some of it out kind of divide it in half as best you can. We might need some more of that dark gray later and I'm going to add more white to this and get a lighter value of gray. We want to definitely be able to tell that these are two different colors. This bottle of white has been the thinnest paint I have ever used very very thin okay so there we can see a nice value change there okay let's grab our rake brush it's gonna have a little bit of water in it remember and now we're just gonna load it up and begin with our next layer start at the lip I need more water in my brush, so I'm going to grab a little bit more water. Let me spritz some more water out on my palette because I'm running out of water. Oops! Whoa! Flinging Santa everywhere. And now you can kind of start deciding how you want Santa's hair to go. We're going to start giving it some shape and movement and lots of fun going on in the beard. Grab water as you need it. Get over here, add a little bit of this color. Okay, over here on this side, I'm up on the very tip of the brush, going like this now.
How fun is Santa looking? All right, I'm going to go into the mustache now and add some of this color in here all the way up. I'm up on the very tippy toe of this brush. If you've got it load right, you should not have to give any pressure at all to this brush. All those little fine hairs on the end of this brush is what's doing all the work. If it's coming off super thick and you're not getting all these nice lines, whew, that's way up there, we don't want that way up there, then um, you need a little bit more water in your brush. Okay, Santa is looking so good. What a good looking Santa. Makes me think of the song Santa Baby. A 54 convertible to light blue. I'm sure you don't want to hear me sing. Okay, he's looking so good. I am going to come around the top and add a few coming out underneath his hat, but I'm going to do that at the end when I add some of the fine detail uh, hairs and stuff going on here. So we're going to start adding an even lighter color on here now. All right, let's make our gray mix even lighter now. So we're going to come over here and a little bit of this gray here. We want it a super light gray now. Super light, even more white than that. I want it a little bit lighter. Oh, that's the wrong color. We don't want that color, no, we want white. I wonder, my white comes out easy and that paint didn't want to come out. Okay, there's a nice light gray there. Now, when you brush it on, if it looks like it's too bright of a color change here, we'll add a little bit more of that gray in there. Just by just by taking our brush over and grabbing some of that gray. So we're gonna load with this color. And we're gonna start really adding some, some fun, fun strokes in here. Take your time. Do not get in a big rush for this. We want Santa to look good. So. No rushing here. We've still got more layers to put on. Even though that's a thick little bunch of stroke there, I'm not going to stress out about it. You know, you can always go back a extra step or two and adjust as you need to up here on the edge. over here. So I'm going to be up on the tip of the brush, the bristles here, and stroking in some hair. Alright, 
let's do this mustache. I need this mustache to come out a little bit more down here. Ooh, that's a lot of paint there. So let's bring it out a little bit more. Make it a little bit more of a fuller mustache. I'll do the same over here. I'm going to bring it out more. And up on those fine hairs of the brush. Ooh, made that one really fat. Let's not do that. mustache shaped a little bit better now. When we add all those top layers on there of white, which is what color we're going to go with next, is just white, and um, layer some whites in there, um, then he'll start looking so much more dimensional. we got to come back and re-tap a little bit here and a little bit here of our fur. Do some shading on the beard. I got some idea maybe for a round Santa. Haven't decided yet. Not a hundred percent. So he is looking really, really good here. Try to stay off of the nose there if I can because I don't want to have to paint the nose back in. I don't mind painting in the uh, nostrils because they're easy. But I don't want to have to try and take my red and cover up. Too much on the nose there which I'm gonna have to cover up a little bit it looks like but oh Santa's looking good he's looking really good and you can add another layer of this color if you want before we add the white love using this brush to make Santa's beard so much fun. You see I'm holding my brush straight up and down. I'm not um, leaning it this way. When you lean it more this way that's when you get those thicker areas like right there. So don't lean it. You're up on the tip. You're using all those individual hairs that are on there. Those are what you're painting with. paint has to be the right consistency to flow off of this brush so if it's not flowing you need a little bit more water both in your brush and probably your paint okay I think I'm going to leave the light gray there our next color we're going to go with on his beard is going to be just straight white all right, Santa is looking so incredibly good here. I'm getting paint everywhere. All right, we're going to go with just white now, and we're going to continue with just a couple of layers of white, or three, however many you need, um, to make the beard and mustache the way that you want it to look. So again, you're just going to start with your thinned paint. Let me thin a little bit. Not crazy, super thin. We're going to start adding our final couple of layers will be just white. So you're going to do one layer and again this is where you can define how you want Santa's beard to look a little bit more, how you want the the hairs to grow or turn or anything like that. These last couple layers will be all about shaping and doing what you want to do 
and how you want your beard to look. There's going to be no wrong way. Santa has many beard styles. Come out here. I had a few little wispy hairs out here. Over here. This mustache. And in the end, you can come back with just a small round and add really fine detail lines on here if you want. I'm not sure that I will yet. I'm, I'm undecided on that part. You can also come back if you feel like you've lost any of the colors that you have in the beard. And you can't see the dimension as well anymore. Then you can come back in and um, add some of those underneath layers back in. Those underneath colors. So that is one layer of the white, and now I'm going to continue on and do a second layer of white on here. And each layer will build the beard more and more. And I got that really crazy thick there, so I think I will come back with some of my other colors when I get done and restroke that. My white is not thinning down like I would like it to. little bit more opaqueness down here at the bottom so it gives the beard some weight and out of here we need some wispy stuff going on here And once we shade all of the beard and stuff, then it's all going to come together nicely. Santa is looking so good. I'm going to brighten up right here. Santa's got a great fluffy beard here. Such a soft beard. 
Okay, I think I want to come in and try and make some super bright ones on top. I've got a little bit more paint in my brush this time. Really staying up on the tip. Really loading that paint in there. going to give us some of the brightest highlights in here. And then we'll do the mustache. I think he's looking pretty good. So before we shade on his beard and mustache, we want to go in and redo the fur where it comes over the hair a little bit. And a little bit of shading on the skin where the right here next to the hair. We can see if we need to come in with a round brush and do some fine little detail strokes maybe in the mustache. Define that just a little bit. All right, let's do our stippling on here. And uh, I'm going to grab a little bit smaller Deerfoot brush. This one's a little bit stiffer, so we'll see how it works. And we want our um, Sable Brown and Oyster Beige. So you can start whichever one you want to. I think I'll start with... Um, some sable brown on here and yeah that's just way too stiff. I'm gonna have to get a softer brush here. Let me put some fresh sable brown out. Alright, I'm gonna tap some on and tap it off because I don't want a ton of paint here. And we're going to tap this so that this hair looks like it is behind the ball. A little bit there. And then right here it comes over this hair a little bit. Okay, I'm going to wipe the paint out and go grab the Oyster Beige. Again, load it. Tap off on a paper towel. And we're going to be very soft here. And try and blend that up into the rest of the ball. Alright, here we go here very softly blend that out and I think I'll grab a little bit of one of our darker browns let me remove the paint out of my brush and we'll go into some burnt umber and put a little bit of that in here kind of lost a little bit of that dark Oyster beige, and now we'll put a little bit of brighter highlight on here. And we can add some white in here too. So I'm going to wipe off, 
and get just a little bit of white and we'll bring a little highlight into here. Okay, that blends it in with the fur, I think, very nicely. Um, I'm going to tap a little bit of white along the front edge here. I want it to be a little bit brighter, so load your brush, tap off on a dry paper towel. be just a tad too light so back into our brown this is a back and forth kind of thing here but as long as you're using just small amounts of paint it's all gonna be good this is the burnt umber just very very small amounts of paint here And that looks spotty for some reason, not liking that. So I'm going to go back to my oyster beige and tap some of that in there. Very softly. Try and cover up those spots that I just tapped right in there. Crazy. Okay, that looks a little bit better. I think I'm going to leave it there because I feel like if I just keep messing with it, I'm just going to muddy it up and just make it a horrible, horrible mess. So I'm going to wash my brush out now because we are done with that. And now I want to shade on the skin. And we're going to use our natural buff and some sable brown. Mix those together on your brush and we're going to float on the face. So I'm going to do two natural buff and one um, sable brown. I'm going to bring that all the way down here to shade this area. I think I'm going to grab a little bit more of the brown in my brush. I want to bring the wrinkles out a little bit farther here. Make them a little bit more pronounced. Over here as well. Santa's little wrinkles. So now we're going in and tweaking on the face just a little bit. This is still just that um, oops, shading mix. All right, let's add a little bit more of the natural buff into here. And we want to put a little bit, just a pity pat, all the way around the hat. We need to go over here and add a little bit of this. Not on the eyebrow, but anywhere on the skin where you can see the skin. We want to add a little bit of this color. And uh, smooth it out. I'm going to wash my brush out. I think I want to go into my natural buff and a little tiny bit of um, wild berry. I want to lighten up on top of the nose here. Just on top. to look rounded. Okay, I 
and clean up the bottom of the nose now with the wild berry and you can mix a little bit of Tuscan red into it. And then, ooh, or a lot of Tuscan red. Wow, that's a bright nose now. And we'll just put that on there and blend it out just a little bit. cheeks of what's left on my brush or next on the cheeks next to the uh, not too much because this is a really bright colored mix I want Santa's lip to pop out more so I'm going to add some whoo, Tuscan red let's stay out of the beard mustache need the red to be over here a little bit more. And then the flesh mix, the shading mix, which is two natural buff and one sable brown to be more here and here. I have to stroke in a few more hairs into the eyebrow there because I kind of got into it with my shading there. But I think that looks a lot better. Okay, this is all the final details on here. Don't worry if you get paint on the background like I just did because um, it's black background. So it's all fixable. Okay, let's start adding some shading on the um, fur. We want to finish out the fur. So I think I need to get a new paper towel. This one is getting saturated. Okay, so for the shading on the fur, we're going to go with some... Uh, let's try burnt umber to begin with. And I think we're going to switch over to some soft black. So we want to figure out where we want the weight of everything to be. So I think I'm going to put it over here on this side. And burnt umber is pretty sheer, so we can just kind of stroke that or softly brush that in. We want some out here on the outside. Oh, that's a lot. Wipe that off, grab a drop of water. So we want to darken out here and right here okay I want to darken it just a little bit more on this one and I think I'm going to um, repeat all of this with some soft black. But I'm not going to cover up as much of it. So soft black. Work it in your brush. That's not dry, so I'm not going to go there. Let me dry this just a little bit. So work it into your brush with some water so that um, it's a little more sheer on the sheer side. Okay, I think all those areas are dry now. A little bit of soft black over here. A little bit out here. Here. We're going to come back in with our final strokes of fur. Maybe this would look better if it was a darker color. Showing up on the forehead a little bit more. 
This is just a wash, washy mix of both burnt umber and soft black. It's just a little bit that I had over here on my Sure, I like that. I don't think I like that. All right, back to some white. I'm going to tap that. Actually, I'm going to use my moisture beige with just a little bit of white. Don't think you've ever messed anything up. Everything is fixable. We had to come back and do this anyway because where we shaded on the skin we needed a little bit of color on here. I'm going to go into some soft black. I need a little bit of dark back in there. Much better. Keep trying to dig into my soft black, but it ain't working because it's pretty much dried up to nothing. All right, the fur looks good. Leave the fur alone. Looks great. All right, I'm going to shade on the um, beard and mustache now. And we're going to do that with our gray value. We're going to go into our medium gray value that we mixed and side load for a float. We might have to go into the dark gray value. This, this value might not show up enough. Let's go into the dark and use that color. I don't think that lighter color is going to show up. And we want a nice soft float. A little bit more water in my brush. And a lot more water in my brush. What is going on here? We'll go around the ball here. A little bit of shading there. That is a lot of paint. What is going on? This is nonsense. Go under the lip. I need to pull some white hairs under the lip more. So I'm going to do that on top of this float. So I'm going to bring it down just a little bit so I can put some bright ones up there. Okay, don't, don't be uh, thinking about how this looks at the moment because we're coming back with uh, bright stuff. So let's go next to the nose. And we're going to do a back-to-back -back right here. Just bring that down. Keep flipping your brush over until you come all the way down to the black. Loading my brush again with water and paint. So over here we're going to have a little bit of I'm going to bring the some fine hairs for the um, mustache up and around and this is how you can definitely shape your mustache with this little bit of shading here. Put a little bit of shading here, even though we're going to come back and put some bright hairs right there on top of that. I think I might shade the lower part of Santa's eye, eyebrows. Okay. 
and once I put it on there if I don't like it I can come back with white and work it out a little bit I'll pull some of this gray into the mustache We're going to get ready to stroke on some detail white onto the beard. Let me find my small round brush here. Which one I want to use. So I'm just going to use a one round. I'm going to get some white paint. And I don't really need to thin this my bottle too much, so if you need to thin yours, go ahead and thin it down to inky consistency. Spritz some water on my palette because I will need that. And I'm going to start first stroking in a, a few strokes down here. I don't think this is the brush that I want. It's not I might have to go to a detail liner. Let me try this one. That other one had some wild hairs on it. Okay, so right down here below the lip, we want to have some a little bit more finer hairs coming out here right into that shading that we put in and then you can pull some out don't make them just kind of stop make them do what they need to do you layer the brighter it's going to get so this is where you can take your round and bring some really bright individual hairs on top we are using straight paint staying up on the very tip of the brush we're not giving the brush any pressure whatsoever and straight paint means I have not added water to my paint. I'm just coming in and adding some fine hairs on here. Or some bright, I guess I should say some bright hairs on top. Just have fun with this. How fun is Santa? Oh my gosh. And you can always come back in with some of your other colors, the grays and stuff, if you feel like you lost a lot of that. But I think mine is looking pretty good. Okay, right here on the side, I want to bring a few hairs of that little bit of shading that I did.
to this mustache. Playfulness to the hairs on his mustache. Okay, don't forget over here on the side we want to bring a few hairs back on top of that side of the hat trim and on top of the ball. Now we're going to pull a few hairs. I think I might do a few more in the eyebrows. I definitely want to do over here. And I could I probably should go to my fine detail liner here. I'm going to stay up on the tip of this brush the best I can. Pretty good here. into my mustache here when I was shading, so I'm going to try and cover that up a little bit. Santa's got a very bushy mustache. Alright, I want to shade underneath the nose again. And then I'm going to Put the nostril back in. And if you lost your black um, in the mouth, put that back in. Let's add a few stray hairs coming out from underneath the hat. And you can do some gray ones or just some white ones. I'll put a couple coming out from up here. I'm going to start with a light gray. Kind of see where I'm going here. And that might be the only place I put any in that higher place. I really think I want a few over here. coming out. So now I'll go into some white. And add a few. Coming out here, we'll shade that here in a second. here. And 
you don't have to add any hairs coming out from underneath your hat if you don't want to. I just felt like he kind of needed that. So we're going to shade that with the gray, the dark gray or the medium gray. I think we might go with medium gray up here. Not very much paint in your brush here. That's not dry, so let me dry it because I'm just going to wipe it off. A little bit of, ooh, or a lot of gray. Wipe my brush off, grab some water so I can blend that out. And then I'll come back with some. Very fine white hairs. Now let's do a couple of fine ones over here. Ooh, a lot. like now I need to tap just a little bit. I don't know why that soft black does that. It just bunches up in there. Santa's looking pretty good. Um, I want to highlight his um, wrinkles a little bit more, so I'm going to take my flesh, my flesh base color, and mix some white in there. And add a little bit brighter. This is all the the finishing details and tweaking on Santa. So this is where you, uh, after you get your beard painted in and you like how your beard looks, this is where you go back and try and determine where you might need a little bit more of something going on. And just do all your final tweaking here. white in my paintbrush here. Something wasn't black. strokes up to that shading there. I don't want it to be quite so thick and defined. Alright, let me get the nostril painted back in here. And we can use some black and some soft black mixed together. And see if they look about the same. get to grow. The 
you do not look the same and that really bugs me. His nose looks completely crooked. <laughs> completely. Well, let me just paint the end of the nose back in. all the tweaking stages. Take your time with it. Don't stress out. A little bit better. Not quite 100%, but look right. Okay, I'm going to have to play around with that nose because that is like, maybe I need to add a little flesh color into that. Make it not quite so bright. I know they're supposed to be bright, but this is like killing me. They're so stinking bright. And I think I'll just pull some more hairs down coming from out of Maybe that will help. Probably not. Crazy nonsense here. better than he did. His nose is getting so red. Definitely has a red nose.
really just trying to get the end of his nose shaped like a round nose. So sometimes it can just be a vicious little circle that you can't seem to get out of. Just keep going and going and going. A little highlight on the nose there. I'm just going to leave the nose right where it's at because it is like stressing me out. Those nostrils are like not what I want them to look like. <laughs> so I think I'm just going to leave it alone for a little bit. grief okay time time to stop time to stop all right i've decided to give him some glasses on his nose um right now i'm not sure if i want them to be silver glasses or gold i'm leaning towards gold because this is a little bit uh different color of santa but i have my topper based in for a silver topper so i may change that to a gold topper um I think I want to paint in my little ornaments over here and um, we're going to make the wire right now that the um, lights go on. So we're going to put out some black and some white and just make a medium to dark gray color. So just brush mix that. Don't be, um, unless you still have some of your um, gray mixes that you did um, still on your palette. Uh, you can use those, but if not, then just mix a, a nice gray color that will show up with this darker background, but not be too bright because we want to um, highlight on it. So I'm going to take my black and white and just mix a dark gray. It's over here. Dark gray. A medium to dark gray. And then we'll just paint in our, and we don't want this to be crazy thick. This is just a wire, so don't get it too thick. If you do get it a little thicker than what you want, remember the background is just black, so you can touch it up. I feel like that got a little thick there, so we'll see how it works out as we go along. And then this actually comes up into the light topper a little bit. So I'm going to leave it off of that for now. And I will come back and finish that after I get the topper painted in. Once I decide what color it's going to be. Stay up on the tip of your brush. You get those nice fine lines. I'm not liking that right there. I think that should go off of the surface there. So we'll take it off and then it will come back on here. I think that'll look a little bit better. I think I'll take my black and touch that up a little bit. And we are going to use this same color to paint in our little toppers on our ornaments. I have got mine drawn in really big, so <clears throat> the ones that are on your line drawing should be the right size, but for me this is a little big and I just drew them on, so I'm going to take them down just a little bit and connect them to the wire. I can always come back in and make these bigger if I need to. Of course, if I make them too big, I can always come back in and make them smaller as well. So, just get the end of the ornament done. We're not going to do a whole lot of detail to these bulbs here. Okay, so we're going to leave those for now. Alright, I'm going to work on the topper now. I want to get it done before we do our light bulbs. So let me zoom in here. 
we decided to keep it gray I'll try to keep you on the camera shot so I'm gonna take that dark gray mix that we just used to paint in our wire and side load for a float and I want to float on the bottom sides of my lines that I have here a little bit too much paint so I'm gonna wipe it off and get some water and here we go and these are different um, widths between here because it's a screw knob and so I wanted it to look more like a screw type knob here or topper like you would see on a regular ornament it's probably best to work from the top down it's a little bit hard line there I'm gonna go up here and work my way down So we're getting a nice little twisty little top there. Okay, we're going to highlight on the other side with some white. The other side of our line that we drew. Let's we'll put a little highlight of some white on here. And see, ideally you should wait for your don't do what I just did. So I'm going to quickly dry this. Let me put my gray back in here. I just went right through it and removed it because it was still wet. So let me dry that. And then I'll go back to my white paint here. Get the, uh, I, I don't want a whole lot of moisture in my brush for this. So Looking better. And we're going to darken and lighten up all these areas. And let's go down here to the bottom edge and put a highlight going across here. I'm just going to go across the whole thing. We'll put our wire in there as soon as we have this dry. So we want to repeat that and uh, darken up our topper. So I'm going to make my gray mix a little bit darker, closer to the black side now. And we'll go right in the center of these. Darken them just a little bit. And of course we're going to brighten that highlight up. So I want to remove most of the moisture out of my brush. I want a little bit of moisture in there to help me move the paint, but I don't want it to thin my paint down here. Along the top here, and down here. Need shade on the outside edges of the topper. 
with a little bit of the either dark gray or black. Dark gray would probably work best here. And I'm going to walk this over just a little bit because this is a big topper. So I want it to be I'm just mixing a little bit more paint here. I want this to walk over just a little bit. No hard lines. Oop. Or drip water on your surface. Goodness gracious, I'm having the worst time here. You think I'd never painted before. So I just dropped water, a drop of water on there, so that took every lick of my paint off because my paint wasn't dry. Where's my mop brush? I'm gonna mop that. And that line right there. I want to soften that down very gently when you're using a mop brush. Don't get carried away. So let me come back to this side. I think I'll walk it over a little bit as well. And that's black and white. Make that darker gray value. mop brush. That's really super wet. I'm going to be very light in that paint area because it is so wet. If I get too heavy with the stippling of this brush here, it will just remove everything right off of it. I mean just cleanly take it off. All right, I feel like my grooves need to be a little bit darker in the center. So I'm going to go in with some straight black again. And then we're going to brighten up those highlights. Our white highlights. And I'm just going to take a round brush this time. And drag those highlights over. Like this. Just a little dry brushing effect here. And even though I have this shaded on the outside edge, I still need my little twisty lines to look like they're going all the way. I don't want them to be washed out. So if they're if they're washed out, just lightly stroke them back. Bring them back just a little bit. Get that illusion of that going across there. I think that ought to finish up our topper pretty good. So let me wide angle out. And that's got the topper done. I like that. Um, I'm going to let the white paint dry. If it doesn't look bright enough after it dries, I'm going to come in and just a little bit of brighter down the center. And this side actually looks like it needs to be a little bit darker. Try and make it match that other side a little bit more. There we go. And so the topper looks good. Looks like one of those little screw bulbs. And I don't know if I mentioned this is a brand new surface on my website that I just put on a few weeks ago. And what date am I painting this? November 13th, 2020. So um, this one hasn't been on my website very long. All right. I've decided since I made my topper gray silver. 
I'm going to make the glasses silver and uh, not bring in another color because I want to keep this pretty cohesive here. So we're going to make a light gray by mixing our um, black and white. So it's going to be a really light gray. You can see it right here. I'm using a one round brush, but you can go to a detail liner. And I'm just going to stay up on the tip of the brush so I don't make these glasses very dark. And of course you can paint your Santa in with no glasses at all. Or you can make them make the glasses any shape that you want. So I might come in and make these frames a little bit thicker. Whew. Kind of got carried away with that line there. You want to be careful removing any of your paint if you don't get your glasses right because you'll remove all of your your red that you've got on the cheeks because it's just washes of color and washes of color are much easier to remove off of a painting um, when you get it wet so you want to try and be very careful with your glasses when you're painting them so um, I'm gonna let those glasses dry a little bit and maybe come back and um, make them a little bit chunkier I haven't decided but for now we're gonna go get some color on our bulbs let's paint our bulbs in I'm gonna let those glasses um, be just leave them still for a little while I'm gonna paint my all of my Christmas bulbs in here with turquoise blue and let's try to make them all the same size if we can. I think that's going to help a lot. Don't let them grow or make teeny, teeny, tiny ones. Turn your project as you need to. And I know I have all of these chalk lines on here. Graphite lines, but um, I'm going to remove them once I get my bulbs all painted in. Right now they are a little bit distracting for you, I'm sure. And it'll take two coats of this blue on here. Okay, we're just going to go all the way around. So I'll go off camera and get the rest of mine painted and uh, I'll get two coats on and then we'll come back and work on them. Okay, uh, my camera wasn't on, sorry about that. I am dry rubbing, so I'm using a small little domed brush. I'm using it dry, I'm loading it with crisp blue. And I'm gonna dry brush this color around my bulbs very softly. Don't get too carried away. We're gonna come back, I think we're gonna have to come back and paint another coat of um, turquoise blue on here. The turquoise blue was too white when I tried to put a glow around these and so I decided to go with the crisp blue but in order to do that we're going to have to paint our bulbs in again. So if you want you can put one coat on your bulbs and then come in and do the dry rubbing around them with this crisp blue this one. and then we'll shade and highlight on everything and this is crisp blue very very softly soft 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 pressure I'd rather we came back and applied more than get too much to begin with and be so sad and you can leave this part of it off if you would like. You don't have to. You can just paint your bulbs in and, and then leave them how you want to see them. You know, just the, the turquoise blue with some shading and highlighting. Don't feel like you have to, uh, you know, if there's any steps on here that don't appeal to you, you're more than welcome to leave them off. Okay. 
That one's a little bit darker than what I would like. I'm going to remove a little bit more of the paint off my brush here. So we're going to do this all the way around. I'm going to go back in and put another coat of turquoise blue on my bulbs here. So when I do my shading and highlighting it will show up. If I try and do it now it's not going to show up too much because we're going to use this crisp blue to shade with. And the only time I start giving this brush pressure is when I can tell there's not hardly any paint left in it. But when you begin you have to do it softly, gently, circular motion because you know that's when it's got the most paint on it and you're never completely a hundred percent sure exactly how much paint no matter how hard you rub it onto that paper towel to remove it because you load the brush you go to a dry paper towel and you rub off all of the paint and then you go to your surface and you paint it on so how fun is this oh my gosh I am so loving this all right so before you put your uh, second or go in and repaint your turquoise make sure you've got the glow around your bulbs just like you want them um, I decided to do all blue bulbs on this because that was my dad's favorite color of Christmas bulbs and I actually do my house all in blues and teals and silvers and white now and uh, I love it it just uh, is so nostalgic for me because that's what my dad liked and he would put blue lights on the outside of the house and it always looked so pretty so there we go all right I am going to get my turquoise uh, base coated back on my bulbs so that we can shade and highlight on them I'll just do that off camera um, because it's the same that I was doing earlier but I think these are looking amazing all right, we sh we've shaded with crisp blue. I don't even know if I got that on the camera or not. <laughs> but we're shading with crisp blue. I think I forgot to turn my camera on again. So we're shading these with crisp blue on one side. And I'm going to repeat and do it a second time. I'm using a small chisel brush. I'm using a size 6. A size 4 would be a good size. Um, a small like quarter inch angle brush if you prefer to use an angle brush. But you do need a small brush to do this. And as you can see I'm not doing them all exactly the same. I want a little variety in this but if you feel like they all need to be shaded on the exact same side then you work it out that way okay. if you need to repaint in your bulb ends then go ahead and do that I'm going to shade on the bulbs with um, a dark gray value so I'm just going to mix that on my brush. I'm going to use the same brush. We don't want to go straight black here because this will blend into the background too much. So we want to keep it just this dark gray and we're going to do the same side of the bulb end that we did the bulb. And this is a small tiny little float if you do not feel like you can comfortably do this you can dampen this area and then just paint some dark gray in there and let it kind of um, feather out on its own mix a little bit more here And you may have to repeat this. I did have to do the blue, the crisp blue on the bulbs. I did twice. So sorry I didn't get that on camera for the first one, but 
the second one is just the same. Okay, so while I still have this paint on my brush, I'm just gonna go back real quickly and just do a second little float on here. This is such a small area. It should not take you hardly any time whatsoever to um, finish this. A little bit of paint on this little bitty brush goes a long way. Getting close to being done with this piece. A little bit more on the lights here and then we'll finish up his glasses. Alright, so that was our shading there with the um, uh, dark gray mix. So now we're going to highlight with some white. And on the bulbs themselves, we're just going to do a little comma stroke. on one side of the bulb. I always want to start from the bulb end and go to the tip. So you're going to have to turn your piece a lot depending on how you um, put your shading on. I'm using a one round. You can use a detail liner. That would be fine. all over the place with this one. Alright, let's do a little highlight on the end piece, the um, bulb ends, and we're just going to make a little, you, you might want to go to a detail liner here now, a little backwards L, just on the opposite side that we put the highlight. So it'll go next to the bulb and along that edge. Just a little bit of a highlight, nothing serious. How fun are these? Oh my gosh. Loving, loving, loving these blue bulbs out here. All right, so we're gonna take the same white here I'm going to stick with the same brush and we're going to add some highlights on our wire. And this is kind of a hit and miss little highlight, so don't do the whole thing. Oh, you'd probably like to be on camera, wouldn't you? Sorry about that. So we're just going to go along and do it in a few places. Don't forget to do the little wires that connect to the bulb. Those all need a highlight on them. And just have a little, little bit of fun. Alright. Look back at it here. I feel like I need a highlight there. Check it out because I might want to brighten some of these highlights a little bit. So I'm going to go back over them. And make them a little bit brighter. spinning that would be helpful and wide angle out so we can see those bulbs oh my gosh that just really sets this piece off I just love it love it love it love it all right we're gonna finish the glasses now all right let's work on the glasses I'm gonna zoom in here I'm gonna put another coat on my uh, frames 
Um, if one coat worked out well for you, then you don't need to do this. This is that light gray, just mixing the black and the white. And let's see if I can get my second coat on here. Take your time. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to wipe the excess paint off and grab some black paint. And we're going to put a little bit of black paint at the joints here. Bring it over onto the frame just a little bit. Grab a little drop of water so I can thin that down. This is the tedious part of painting glasses, is doing this, this part right here. We'll pull some black onto the, the um, frames. You want to make sure you're using almost straight paint. It can have a tiny bit of water in it, but you don't want it um, getting too uh, thin and running places. You don't want it to run. side bring it down just a little bit need a drop of water really stay up on the tip of this brush so make sure your paint is pretty fresh and if you get too much paint um, like right there I feel like I got too much paint I'm gonna wash my brush out to remove most of that black and go into my gray mix that I made for the frames and take that down just a little bit So we should have, um, you can see the dark areas very well. Uh, those are more the shaded areas. So we're going to take some white now. And we're going to put some of this in the center down here. Across the center on the top. This is the reflections on here. A little bit in the center. Don't let it get too fat. That's almost too fat. I'll bring a wet brush in and clean it up. This white will fade in there so much, I'm telling you. Okay, we got a little bit of a glow on there. So now I just want to take my white and do a dot, 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 dot. Some little shine on the glasses, dot, dot, dot. Maybe one over here. These are the tiniest little dots on here. Don't. Those are just some highlight dots. Don't get carried away with those at all. Okay. I want that to get dry so that we can dry brush a little highlight through the lens itself. Give it a little bit of reflection. You want to make sure those dots are dry. I'm going to come in with my gray here. I see I need to blend this a little bit here. So I'm going to bring my gray back in. Okay. Any place you feel like your gray is just gone. Let's add some of that back in. Keep them silver looking. 
And you can put um, some metallic paint on these as well if you would like to. All right, let's do a dry brush on here. So I'm going to use a damp brush. I'm going to use this small chisel one. You can use a small round. Rounds are what I've used in the past. And we're going to take our dry paper towel and I'm going to remove most of the paint off of it and then just, oh, I want to do a little bit more paint than that. We're just going to skim across here a little highlight. I think I will chisel edge so we can get a little bit more reflection on there. We want it a little bit milky on here, a little bit, and then just chisel edge. Oops, not gray. Let's go into our white, not our gray. And chisel edge. Some highlights on there. And you can use a small round to do this. Yep, I don't like that, so I'm going to take that off. Now I have to be careful removing here because I can remove my cheek color. So let me drag some paint across that again. I feel like I have black paint all over my brush here. Wash it out grab some white. There we go. Okay, I'm going to do it that way and then I think I'll go to my round brush or my liner and add the bright little highlight in there. even be a little bit brighter than what I would like. A little bit of reflection there. I still have that gray right there that got into my brush. That really bugs me. bit of that white in there. There we go. That looks much better. Just a little float of white along the bottom edge. It was all I did. And I think this is going to fin finish up this Santa ornament. Let's wide angle out. Oh yes, that looks so good. This is Saint Nick. I love it. It is one of my favorites. Those blue lights just set that off beautifully and um, make the piece. This is the, the um, large bulb ornament on my website. And there we have Saint Nick. Oh, you guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this one. I have loved painting this one so much. Thank you so much for painting with me. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like my video and uh, leave a comment. I appreciate every single one of you and I cannot wait to see you on the next project, everybody. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.